saying that Muhammad couldn't go to the mountain. The mountain came to Muhammad. So Guru Maharaj saying, my Guru Maharaj wanted me to go to the West in peace and I couldn't go. Now the West is on my doorstep. Should I tell them, go away? No. So now, and he saw it in very uh, divine perspective. He said, as he told me when I came to be him, be with him here permanently in August of 1981. That someone said, this, and what are you going to do? What will be your saving? And he was, to, to make recordings of me, that'll be your life's engagement. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> and Guru Maharaj, I couldn't even say it, actually. Someone said it for me. Because I was like so afraid, like, you might say no. And Guru Maharaj said, I tried to collect the maximum from my Guru Maharaj, and I did. He said, but in your case, he, oh, he said, my tendency for distribution was not so great. And we think, what does that mean? Because the Guru Maharaj, we know, he's incessantly engaged in Hari Kata, mining substance and distributing them. But as he said, he preferred in a small group, and not any like uh, assertive, aggressive preaching stuff. So he said, my tendency for distribution is not so great. I mentioned that this morning, Madhava Maharaj would say to Goraj, you're the great advisor of the king, but not, you wouldn't be a good king. Because Goraj doesn't want to be a king. He has his dominical nature. Right? But the advisor of the king is even higher than the king in that sense. And Madhava Maharaj always did time. He said, you are cheating the intelligentsia. Because Guru Maharaj would stay here and not go to Calcutta. And You're cheating the educated section. They try in different ways to like push him to go. Or Swami Maharaj would come and say, Nehru and Gandhi, he knows they're in some way. Come on, you and me, we're going there. They need to hear what you, you can tell them. Come on now, let's go. And Guru Maharaj is like, as he told, backward pushing around. But then he told, he said, so my tendency for distribution is not so great. He said, so, but what you should do is come here and collect from me and then go and distribute them. That, your position should be different. And so I could understand that, and happily, that that would be a good arrangement for me. Yes, I'll come, give you, uh, extract things, and then go to street and then come back. And, and, and I've mentioned one time, as I was leaving here, in Guru Maharaj, this is another thing that we can share. Um, get the embrace of Sri Guru Maharaj before going. That wonderful embrace of Sri Guru Maharaj. Where once when Gurudev was very upset, someone blasphemed Sri Guru Maharaj, and Gurudev wanted to send them to the loka. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put it that way. <laughs> and he's ready to go and do it. And he told me, and then he said, I thought, if I'm going to kill one, I might as well kill him. <laughs> and then I will go here and not now, and I will finish him. Then I'll go there by the time they reach here. But he had it all figured out. <laughs> and then, and and there's all the time, he's going to leave, and Guru Maharaj said, Guru Maharaj didn't sit on his tongue. Because she's such a divine lady, Guru Maharaj's sister, Gurudev can't touch the tongue because she's there. This type of loving, affectionate, but this time, Gurudev was so furious, infuriated by someone insulting Guru Maharaj, who wants to send them to Galoka. And Guru Maharaj came and embraced him. And just like squeezed it all out of him. And then Gurudev became very calm. And then later, when they were like everything was normal, Gurudev said, How much of your power did you use? Because he couldn't move. But he embraced the Gurudev, and Gurudev said, Very little. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know. So, why did I think? Oh, the embrace of Sri Gurudev. So this time I'm going. Get the embrace of Guru Maharaj and the garlands from the deities. 
Saraswati Thakur's Kaur. So I said, now our Goswami Maharaj is going to some remote corner of the world. And I'm like, I'm going to California. <laughs> He said, now you're going to this remote corner of the world. And then I thought, well, I saw the look on my face. And he said, this is your home. Navadip is our home. This is the seat of Mahaprabhu's conception. He said, and now, in service to that conception, you're going to some remote corner of the world for some time, and then you'll come back to it. Of this type of love and affection. Once some devotee here, I, put, I made a question about the tapes and everything, and uh, he said something like, Well, what would you know? You're an outsider. So I wrote a letter to Srila Guru Maharaj. Maybe you can say it's a naughty letter, but this really irked me. So I said in the letter, and by the way, you know, in the end, so-and-so could do, referred to me as an outsider. Like, is that true? You know, what is your, I want to know about this. And Guru Maharaj wrote back this letter, he said, When Govinda Maharaj heard your letter, blood was oozing from his heart that you will ever be considered <coughs> as an outsider of Chet. Blood was oozing from <laughs> I wanted to hear that. <laughs> so, we, we're so privileged to be a different kind of objects with the affection of Sri Guru Maharaj, of Sri Guru But coming here, when I came in connection with Guru Maharaj, I foolishly, arrogantly thought I've been in connection with Krishna Consciousness Movement for around 10 years. So you could, and, and maybe I had some reputation of like, oh, he's heard all the complex things. He's read all the complex books. He's read all the complex letters. He can represent, you know, Prabhupada's thinking very well. And, and if that, to whatever degree that may be true, I'm eternally uh, grateful. But coming in connection with Guru Maharaj, very quickly I realized how little I knew, if any, about Krishna consciousness. And not in any way the slight feel qualified, but I just realized in the presence of Guru Maharaj, in the beginning he would say something and then I would think, yeah, it's Prabhupada's own. I'd like try to corroborate everything he said. But then it started going beyond what I could corroborate by Shastri reference or a tape or a letter. And then I thought, if I will forget, not forget, but take, take everything I know and shelve it for some time. I'll just put it in the, I'll suppress it and put it in the background and just concentrate on what Srila Guru Srila is saying. Then I'll be in a better position to make more rapid progress instead of always trying to verify what I'll just now hear from him exclusively and then I'll be in a better position later when I come back to look at what I thought was valuable and collected before and see what should be retained and what should be in his work left away and I think that was the proper way to proceed and what became clear to me uh, quickly was this shift. Every, we were members of the Krishna Consciousness Movement, the Hare Krishna Movement. So it's like Krishna, 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 and Krishna in the center, and then there's Radharani and others, and going, but Krishna, Krishna, and everything Krishna. And still it's everything Krishna, Krishna. But coming in connection with Srila Guru Maharaj, suddenly this shift took place where Radharani became in the center and by extension Mahaprabhu, Goronga, Mahaprabhu, means Krishna under the influence of the devotion of Srimati Radharani. So when, when Guru Maharaj would be pressed, they'd say, well, there's three different types of those who are more 
He destroys towards Krishna, does for Mahabharata, does equally destroy. What category? Dromars would start blushing, like trying to conceal, like he's been discovered, and he would be saying, we favor go wrong down. <laughs> like a blushing teenage girl, like how much we love Goranga. And through Goranga, we get Radharani Krishna everything. When he, he asked me once, of all the books you've published, which one do you like the best? And I, was, I thought it was like a trick question. I was like, oh, what's the answer to this? What, is, what am I, like, am I supposed and the girl I was seeing, I can't answer, he just stopped it and said, Golden Volcano! <laughs> he said, I like Golden Volcano. Why? What is the Golden Volcano? Again, the girl was noted for his original expression. Same, the heart, and the fe love and affection under pressure. The pressure, he said, of the boiler maker, the furnace, the, what's burning in the heart of Sumati Radharani separation. Volcanic eruptions are coming out from that heart. Volcanic eruptions are coming out from the heart of Mahabharu, screaming in the form of the Shikshastaka. So not some stereotypical, mild idea about, like, I, someone said, hey, yoga is supposed to make you calm. Right? There's nothing calm about this. Right? It's very, I mean, ultimately you could say calming, but he's using explosive terminology. Volcanic eruptions from the heart. That's not from the, the mild, calm position of a, a, a stereotypical meditator. But this is very intense. The why are the brothers going? They're cursing Brahma. You don't know how to make eyes. Foolish. <laughs> Supposed to be creator of the universe. And you don't know how to make eyes? Why are they blinking? Why have you done that? Foolish. They're cursing him for being so foolish. <clears throat> and and others. So that intensity we felt and experienced at the lotus feet of Srila Guru Maharaj. Sometimes he would say, when I think of Radharani, I lose my existence. And he said, I, I, we are interested in Mahaprabhu's Krishna conception. He said, everything else is trash. We can only mimic those words, but when Guru Maharaj would say something like that, you could feel it. That, that he has the authority the, uh, to express these kind of things, this exclusive devotion for Mahaprabhu and Radharani, and, and to such an extreme degree. And then imagine at 92, Guru Maharaj saying, but recently, I'm feeling some affinity for Krishna. <laughs> At 92, he said, recently, very recently, this has come to me. Saying, and then why? To keep it consistent with what he said all along? Saying, because if you're going to be a member of Radharani's group, then naturally you'll have to be affectionate to Krishna. Is there a And how who is infinitely superior to us is treating us like an equal. Guru Mars and Guru, that's what they're, they're infinitely superior, yet treating you like an equal. But sometimes we'll even foolishly think that we are. They're making you that comfortable. So I told Guru Mars when I came here, uh, and was, you know, rather unceremoniously kicked out, as they say. And uh, I was under the influence of his generous heart and non-fault-finding ways. I was saying, well, they have some criticism about me. 
भक्ति विज्ञान So I, I was trying to give some credit to their criticism. Say only under the influence of Guru Maharaj could I be that generous. So I said, well, sometimes they're saying I'm supposed to be the president of this temple. There's 500 devotees there, like head in the clouds, maybe too much dealing with scriptures and sh- that type of thing. Should be more practical, hands-on, you know. And, and I said, you know, Maharaj. Uh, maybe, maybe there's some truth in what they're saying. I'm willing to concede that. And Guru Maharaj said, no. He said, many can manage. He said, but who can go up in uh, the higher plane and bring something down from there and distribute it? That is a rare thing. So he defeated that. But then, then a little sheepish grin appeared on his face and he said, but If they're finding these faults in you, then why have you come for my association? He said, birds of a feather flock together. <laughs> And I thought, oh, I want to be a bird in his flock. <laughs> That, so he defeated me, he said, look, if, if that's what they say is true about you, then what did you come to me for? then it's indirectly to uh, criticize his position. So he defeated that very sweetly. And so many things like that. Gurudev would say, one word from the lotus mouth of Srila Guru Maharaj is sufficient to make us his slaves forever. That's his word. One word. And you say, oh, is this the fanatical expression of a disciple? And Guru Dev would say to me something like this. You told I was a fanatic for Guru Maharaj. I like it. You said, Goswami said, I'm a fanatic of Guru Maharaj. <laughs> so is this the expression merely of a fanatical follower? There's again the sloka. And uh, it's hard to... <coughs> discern where it's from, but it, where it says that one word from the Guru, disciple, all the wealth in the world, you cannot pay that back. And again, just to underscore this point, what if that one, what do we get from Guru? Om. <laughs> all the Guru, Mother, Om. But that's, so that, I'm now showing how this all makes sense, shastrically, <coughs> spiritually, it's undefeatable. But Gurudev is taking it deeper than that. Think one word from the lotus mouth of Guru Maharaj is sufficient to make us his slaves forever. Whatever it is, it doesn't have to be owned. When Guru Maharaj was with Saraswati Thakur and the Braja Mandala Purikrama, at one point, Guru Maharaj went to take his shoes. Because they have to take off the shoes and enter different places, like everyone just had to do it. And he said, He's holding his suit and Saraswati Thakur turned to him and said, Give them to me. Give them to me. And Guru Maharaj said, That, it was so inconceivably beautiful, the way he said this, Give them to me. He said, It was the way that a, uh, we hear in the Brahma Sangita, that all movement is dance, all speech is song. And so that Saraswati Thakur, who uh, did not sing in the kirtan, did not dance in the kirtan, when someone else said, that when the Gauri Mahabharata, how do you hear them? Saraswati Thakur, he was singing and dancing. Guru Maharaj said, Prabhupada? Inconceivable. So think about it. Who Guru Maharaj wrote in his poetry, Kripaya Hari Kirtan Murti Dharam. He's Hari Kirtan Murti. Hari Kirtan personified. He's talking about Krishna until he becomes unconscious. Right? He didn't dance in the Kirtan. Everyone's dancing by his inspiration. He didn't sing in the Kirtan. And the like Guru said in conclusion, yet every word that ever came from his mouth was Kirtan and his every movement was dance. 
That's rumors as way of seeing Srila Saraswati That with that intensity of preaching Krishna conception, what is rumors seeing? Lotus face, like a lotus flower, flush, pink, expressing itself in full bloom and full blossom. What is his neck like? He's saying uh, his neck looks like the golden stalk of a lotus, and his, uh, a lotus would be at Ninda, blasphemy, compared to the actual beauty of Srila Saraswati. But Srila Gurumars himself, he looks so beautiful. Gurumars would express himself like this, with his uh, palms, his hands, and, you, and he had one ring that Gurudev gave him that was a pearl, Mukta, uh, a little pearl ring on one finger. But if you look at Srila Guru Maharaj, his, the lotus nails on his, on, his, on his lotus hands, the nails, they look like pearls. And so when Guru Maharaj is talking, it looked like 11 pearl moons were orbiting his lotus face while a stream of Karikatan nectar coming out. That's what it looked like. 11 moons orbiting the lotus of Guru face and an endless stream of Krishna Kata, Guru Kata coming from him. And we were reminded when Bhakti Randa and Madhusudan Maharaj took sannyasas when we went to Guru veranda. And there you see these two locations where all the, what we know as the books of the Mat and the Mission and Guardian and Devotion, they all sprung out from that, right? Sometimes Guru Mahar is saying, like, the childlike uh, uh, sense of discovery and excitement, he's like, this came to me the other day, right? He wasn't just talking, things he heard from 40 or 50 years ago, right? Fresh thing, he's like, oh, this came the other, you know, two days back. And then uh, reveal that to you. So anyway, in that place, I'm reminded of like, you know, in Chernobyl, there was a nuclear event like 30 years, 20, 30 years ago. But you can go there today, like with a Geiger counter, and you can, t there's still radiation, and a lot of it. You won't see it with your eyes, but a special machine can detect the presence of the radiation. So in a similar way, when you're in Navadvip Dam, and more specifically, at the Aparad Bunzinger Park, and you're at Chaitanya Saraswat Mat, there's a type of spiritual radiation, like nuclear, spiritually nuclear events took place here, right? And beyond time and space, but it's still within the environment. And sometimes, by the grace of Gurudev, Guru Maharaj, if we're fortunate, we can tap in. <coughs> To these things in different places, like here in the room of Sri Guru and the veranda of Sri Guru Maharaj, at the samadhis, before the deities. And the last thing I'll say before Madhusudan Maharaj will speak is that <laughs> going before the deities of Guru Goranga, Gandharva Govinda Sundar, the Guru Maharaj, his Radharani, Radha, she's dancing. That is her gesture. She's dancing, Gandharva. Why? To keep Krishna attractive. That's why she's singing and dancing, to keep Krishna totally attractive. And the last time we went there, the Gurudev, one of the last times, we were looking. Gurudev turned to me, well, he's seeing the deities, and he goes, heavy Madhura Rasa. <laughs> 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 what he sees with those eyes, I can't even begin to imagine, but that he's kind enough to share something. <laughs> so just to conclude, so Guru Maharaj is the devotee of Mahaprabhu to the extreme. So I say, well, what about Krishna? Who is Mahaprabhu? Enveloped in the heart and halo of Radharani. Krishna, he... This is the good news, the most inconceivably wonderful news. Is Krishna is announcing to the world that it's better to be a devotee than to be Krishna. Take it from me. What, who should know? I'm Krishna, and I'm telling you, it's better 
it's superior to be a devotee of me than it is to be me. Akhila Vasamrita Murti Krishna. But not just any devotee. He's praising Radharani. Radha Prema Rasasinga, Radha Mahima Prema Rasasinga, Jagatha Jamaka. So Guru Mahārāj said, that's why Mahāprabhu descended to preach the glories of Radharāṇī to the world, the greatest devotee of Krishna, who can give Krishna to everyone. When he wants to give Krishna and Krishna fame to everyone, right? Guru Rupa Harindora Radha Bhuchu Chavrita. The Guru Rupa of Krishna is Gauranga. When he becomes Guru, he takes the position of Gauranga. And from that position, he can give and give the highest thing. So, <coughs> so I just have to say this also, but Mana, and you can pick up maybe on this and tell some things about Guru Day, but you know, Guru Omar is just so attached to Sri Guru Day. Sometimes his God brothers would be a little envious about it. As if it was like an impediment or something. You know. <laughs> and, but sometimes Srila Govindamar, she has to go to Calcutta for a few days. And this is a whole drama. How to get Gurumars to accept that Govindamars will go to Calcutta and he'll be right back. It's a very delicate dance, a delicate issue. You've got to really prime Gurumars in just the right way. And then Gurudev will be gone, and so many times, Gurudev, when he reaches the Gauranga Sethu group, by the time he gets there, there's Harichan or Mahananda group, where he's like, and he knows Gauranga is already calling him back. It's like bicycle. Right, yeah, there's something, you gotta go in, and then he has to come back. And then they have to, it's like when Krishna leaves to go cow herding in the morning from Mother Yashoda, there's some similar. They have, like, the, the goodbye goes on eternally. And they do it again and again and again until they can convince her. The last thing is where she's pleading with Baladev to take care of Krishna. But nothing will happen to her. And after Baladev's, like, promising, and, you know, and they're, like, holding it, you know, finally they can, like, get out their flutes and start singing and dancing and go to work. <laughs> But anyway, once some devotee came and said something to Guru Maharaj, the Guru Maharaj was like so uh, uncompromising and unfriendly. I want to say that you told, told something about him. And then Guru Maharaj came out very, he uh, was about his country where he's preaching. But Guru Maharaj didn't know, he said, if they don't respect the dress of the sannyasi, then don't go to that country. But it was like, that's the country he's from, that's where he feeds it. So he comes out, Guru Maharaj told me not to go to my country. And then someone else said about another thing, and it was going to affect collection, and it was like a whole thing. And as usual, Guru Day has to solve these matters. But he came to me to tell me what to disseminate for future understanding. And he said, I mean, and this I have to say also with fond remembrance. Really, you know, I couldn't drink the water from the well like Mother Sudan. So, because I'm just a screwed up individual. So, what he would do is make some lemon sarbat, a little like 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 a Italian soda kind of thing, you know, and send that to my room. And sometimes. If there was no, there would be a knock at the door, it would be Gurudev. Yeah. Where were you going to find someone with that type of love and affection? He would bring this drink to me himself. Right? Because he knows, like, I was having difficulty drinking from the tube well. But anyway, so this time he comes and he's telling me, like, some instructions to, like, disseminate her. Before I go to see Guru Maharaj, before I will tell anything to Guru Maharaj, so first I will go and be in his divine presence. And then see, what is his mood? 
Jesus. And then if I, depending on what his mood is, maybe I won't say anything, or I'll see how oh, it's favorable now to introduce this thing. So he's trying to say they made the mistake of not detecting Guru Maharaj's mood, expressing something, and then like the, the chaku, the, the machete came down. <laughs> so then Gurudev told the secret, he said, but sometimes, he said, if I need to put Guru Maharaj in a good mood, to then later get him to like sign off on something, he said, I will sing this one song. He said, I learned this song when I was in Brahmanpur as a little boy. He's like four years old or something. And these cowherd men, these Gowalas, would come and they'd be having like kirtans about Radha and Krishna and things like that. And, and, but it would be from like the perspective of cowherd boys. So Gurudev said, he would as a little boy, join them, like the group would be dancing by and he'd like join on the end. And he said, and I felt like I was a cowherd boy at that time. <laughs> so, but anyway, then he, he said, so I sing this song. When Gurudev came, he knew so many songs. And Guru Maharaj told, like, you forget that for now. Kick off 30 bucket of note songs. You commit these to memory. Gurudev learned all 30 in a week. Guru Maharaj was impressed. But later, sometimes Guru Maharaj said, what are some of those songs? And on special occasion, he could sing one of these songs from his childhood, that we would normally take it to be maybe inappropriate for Hari Kara. But in this song, it begins with Tunga Mani Mandire. And here, the Guru is sitting right there, in one of the last times we were here. First, I saw a Guru Dev, like, like talking to himself or something, and with this big, beautiful, blissful smile on his face. And I couldn't help but ask, what are you, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> and he said, oh, um, what do you say, you can call her Jasomati, Yasoda. He said, she's doing Araki to the face of Krishna. That's what he was uh, relishing. And then I said, but the the Tunga Mani Mandire, I am searching, I can't I can't understand. What is this mean? And Guru said, Oh the very same like the heart of Srimati Radharani is like a jeweled lighthouse that is illuminating you know, Krishna pain in all directions. That's the sign that he said would put Guru Maharaj in a good mood. <laughs> and so sometimes I'm singing that song, then Guru Maharaj is in a good mood, then I get in the and I go. But then maybe they send you on the cycle to the end of the cycle. It's usually cheaper for that. Right. <laughs> so on that note, if you would please say something. <laughs> I cannot give a, a lecture as you are giving me. In fact, you are... I can't give it. No, you are well famous <laughs> for giving a, a lecture like that. I can only talk to the devotees and say something. But on that note, if you want me to be from there, then... Our dear Subha Sakapa Guru became Shiva Damodam. Then, if Shiva Gurudev was in Calcutta and oh. Guru Maharaj is wanting him to come back, to come back and really wants him to come back, right. and he, he must come back, he would send Subha Sakapa Guru. And Subha Sakapa Guru, Damodam, he was so bigger, but very forceful, very forceful, <laughs> very strong. And the Gurudev described it so affectionately. Oh, oh Guru Maharaj and Subha Sakuru. Then I had to come. If I don't go, he's standing there at the door. I tell him, oh, I tell Gurudev I'm coming. So he said, no, Guru Maharaj told me to, to bring you back. Right. <laughs> then, okay, then I'll, later in the afternoon, then he sort of thinks he's gone. He opens the door. Subha Sakuru is still standing there. <laughs> So that was a, a, another little pastime related to that. And then Subha Sakati later became Damodama Maharaj and he was very sweet and very kind. Yeah.
was an invent him today because he is one of the first, pers to first push. persons to push me to wear this kind of clothes yeah. and then it really hasn't, he repeatedly is pushing me all to myself and to others too, you yeah. know, having a dream, etc. Yeah. He was very forceful, very yeah. clear about his dream and it hasn't come up again and again and again. Just very recently, very recently it came up and all of the senior sannyasis heavily explaining from so many scriptural <laughs> ways so that I'm, I'm baffled and cannot give any answer to that by my age and by circumstance and, and so many other things and now it's the right time and we have all the sannyasis here. I went to each of the sannyasis and without having said yes, no, 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 I didn't yeah. say <laughs> no, no, yes. No. <laughs> but each of the sannyasis pushing this way. So I know that today I've had an operation, I've been in the operation theater, <laughs> so I'm not in the best of health to speak after an operation. And I did ask them to give me an anesthetic. <laughs> but it is the wish of the Vaishnava. You can say the combined wish, maybe one is quite sufficient, but the combined wish of the Vaishnava is a distant place. And my deciding factor, my turning point is turning to Yes, and Guru Maharaj. Guru Maharaj is poor. The role of the Vaishnava is supreme. So we'll say Krishna is supreme. You hear Vaishnava say, Krishna Icha. What is the will of Krishna? But then Guru is told, and Guru Maharaj as well. But the Vaishnavas will say, no, but the, because Krishna is Bhaktivatsala, he loves his devotees. Whatever their will is, that is supreme. So it's a fact, when the will of Krishna becomes expressed through the will of the Vaishnavas, then it's a double dose of supreme will. Or as here they would say, wills supreme. <laughs> I would just like yeah. to say, both Guru Maharaj and Guru Dev used to talk about the predecessor Acharyas and the six Goswamis, even Mahaprabhu and Nityananda, very much in the present tense. And I would just like to say one thing, I only say this, I think that Guru Maharaj is present and Guru Dev is present. They haven't left, they disappeared. They so <coughs> we are playing the very days. In my case, of course, now I'm having to make that very sincere prayer that everybody needs to uh, see with their presence and know that they are present and watching and see and they must be pleased by the presence of all the devotees here. They were so extraordinary, they are so extraordinary because may be invisible but they are seeing everything, they are all together. Not only they are together, we just touched on when Guru, uh, when Guru Maharaj passed away, Shiva Shigan Maharaj passed away from the world, then I was with Shiva Govinda Maharaj at the deities in the afternoon. He would go for an afternoon walk regularly at that time. And we were in front of the deities. And this was my most memorable time in front of the deities, moment, you could say. The Guru Dev is standing in front of the deities with his hands on the plinth. And he's looking and looking and looking and he's fixed, he's glued to the deity. And then, as a, I say, I don't know if anybody else was there. I only remember him and me, we were standing side by side. And who else was there? I, maybe one or two were there, I can't say. But Guru Dev was saying, how beautiful is Radha Rani, how beautiful is Radha Rani. I never saw her so beautiful. And then he's sort of like saying, isn't she like this? And again, we're thinking, I can only see, I mean, I, I can only see it outside, I only can see that you are seeing what you do. I am sitting in the moon. But Guru Dev said, why is she so, why is she smiling so much? And then he said, Guru Maharaj has returned to her association. So they are all together, rather than this So. They are all present. It is not a historic matter. It is a present thing. 
So if only this one job I can make that one. President and the leaders of Trooper Kind of Sheriff Long Long. The president is selling all those articles. The only said about that is that we have a tacit obligation and it's that, that to be much and for everyone. Every disciple. What's been freely gifted to you by your Guru Dev, your Guru Varga, you must distribute that to others. And then he added this one point and said, and not anything less than what was given to you. Not some generic idea, or even generic Krishna consciousness we celebrate. But that's not what, what distinguishes Chaitanya Sarasvati that mark from any other divine mark. It's a unique wealth of the Chaitanya Sarasvati mark by the grace of Srila Guru and Srila Guru Dev. And we're all fortunate to be uh, recipients of that. That's what we're supposed to extend to others. And not anything less than what's given to us. And that's why when there's the tendency to be harsh and you know, when Guru Dev and Guru is being generous or dismissive and they're being accepting, rejecting and they're embracing, then we're under the influence. They're in, we're offering ourselves. We want to come under their influence. And as Madhu Sudan is saying, this very thing Guru Maharaj said when someone used, you know, I'll just say the B word. Uh, and Guru Maharaj said, no, not to say like that. He said, we are using the word disappear. He said, they are fully absorbed in, in another thing, just not visible. We heard Prabhupada from the beginning use his word prakat, aprakat. So manifest and unmanifest. But when we say unmanifest, this means not visible to us here, but not even on a point of invisible, we want to say, we are devotees of the invisible. <laughs> And we worship in that plane. <coughs> sometimes, when we would be here hearing Guru Maharaj's Hari Kata, sometimes he would be astonished at what he said. The level of representation, the flow that came through. And then he would say in a very affectionate, generous way, he said, Our Guru Maharaj and your Guru Maharaj, they're looking down on this transaction and they're very pleased, they're very happy. So, it's a fact. We're, when we hear Srila Gurudev, someone gave me a tape that's Gurudev, it's a Gurudev on fire, uh, speaking all these wonderful slogans from Krishna Kaimani from in other places. Technically speaking, it's like Australia, 1977, uh, six or seven. Six. But when you hear it, it has nothing to do with time and space. And Bhakti Vinod writes this, Neti Hasa Nikopano. Neti Hasa means history. But Saraswati Thakur dropped this enigmatic phrase saying, Krishna's pastimes are not historical and neither are they imaginary. And you're going, wait, you mean it didn't happen? That's not what he's saying. See, they're not a historical occurrence. Just that plane is being manifested here at a particular time, we're appreciating that. And then it's withdrawn, it's being manifested in another plane. They said, maybe that's the kalpana. Kalpana means imaginary or fictitious. It's, and it's not the creation of something. Someone wrote all these things. As uh, we heard in that, when you wrote the Champahati and praised Jayadev, right? Jayadev was funny. And the, how beautiful this is. His Jayadev Goswami, right? I once said to her, I said, oh, your name means like honeymoon? She said, no, no, no. Your name not what well, means. It's a sweet type of movement of Radharani. It's a very high name. The chunk how she is moving. <laughs> we can't even think of it. We're seeing her what we did. <laughs> For a moment. And then let it go. <laughs> <coughs> what was I saying? Oh, Nathan House in the Kalpana. 
but oh, Sarah's living cousin. So oh. whether or not they happen occurred. Oh, not just history and nothing. Right, and appearing, being visible in this plane for some time. Oh, Jayadev. So Jayadev was funny. He say, "Hello, I work to give a Govinda. I know what I'm doing." Right? Okay, a song in the temple of Jagannath, Seder, Tamahapu, all of these things will happen in time. But when it comes from his heart to express some particular thing, he's thinking, too much audacity. But you think you're a great poet, great, you can say these things, whatever will come out of your heart, that's real? No, God, that's... And what did he write? Think. And Radharani and Krishna, something, they have a disagreement about things. And a, what are the basis of love disagreements? No reason. There's no cause. That's the important thing to understand. Like love, there's no cause, but suddenly there's all this attitude going in both directions, that kind of thing. Sometimes you know what I'm saying? Radharani forbidding Krishna entrance in her kundra. What type of seva is that? If, so and so, like, if Krishna comes, tell him he's not allowed to enter. That's your job. Krishna comes. Uh, Krishna, can I talk to you for a second? <laughs> <laughs> he's not allowed to enter because of some perceived offense. So, anyway, so then Radharani, uh, oh, so in this, one of these sort of events has transpired, and he's thinking to write the Kim Padante, that's another sort of really good kind of thing, but that, that Krishna is going to touch the feet of Radharani and beg forgiveness. That's what he's thinking to write. And then he thinks, this is too much. I'm getting carried away. I don't trust what's being expressed here. And he erases that point. Think better. I should just calm down, go bathe, take prasadam, come back to this later, be a humble devotee. Somehow I've gone way beyond my capacity. And that's how he's thinking. The great Jayadev, Kavi, Jayadev Goswami, the author of the Gita and what do we hear? While he's gone, Krishna assumes his form and before his life and goes empty. With his own hand, Krishna writes those very words. That Krishna, he bows down, he touches the lotus feet of Radharani and asks forgiveness. He's writing in his own hand. Why? He wants this to be known in the world. Radhar Mahima Prema Rasasima. How great Radharani is. Yes, I admit it. She's superior to me. Right? She's Krishna's better half. Is it possible for the Absolute to have a better half? Yeah, apparently it is. She's Krishna's better half. He's admitting defeat in the presence of her devotion, that she's superior. He wants that to be revealed in the world. He writes it with his own hand. So, and then Jayadev's wife, thinking that's Krishna, uh, her husband, serves him, takes the prasada, leaves. She's sitting there now taking his remnants as the Vedic system. And, and then actual Jayadev comes back and sees his wife eating, and that's not the system. She, he should eat first, then it's okay. And he's saying, What are you doing? He's saying, you know, I'm taking this remnants. But before me, what do you mean before you? You just took everything. <laughs> My husband is losing his money. <coughs> what? Tim, don't you remember? You went in and you wrote one more thing in the book, and then you came out with the Sodom, and then he's and he said, what? And he go, runs in to see that book. He sees the Krishna, what came in his heart? The will of the Vaishnava is supreme. Krishna wrote it for him. I want everyone to know that. Then, of course, Jayad is very eager to get that prasadam from Padma Vati. <laughs> <laughs> so once, we brought one of the big gurus from this time here to meet Srila Guru Maharaj. We had a very nice meeting. 
and uh, as usual at the end, because I was thinking, my my strategy was that I will shamelessly bring anyone in connection with Guru Maharaj, and then I'll know that I've done as much as I can. And I'm thinking, they'll hear from him, that'll be it. And Guru Maharaj told me later once, and I myself was an example of that, when I said these very things to him, as we got more intimate and expression, Guru Maharaj said, it takes two meetings. <laughs> and I went, oh, yes. You think, right, you should only think one, right? But what happens is, after the first meeting, we were taken to such a high place, as Sarva Bhavana Prabhu, the Bengali once said, when Guru was doing Shikshastha come, and I saw, we saw Nabhadri began to uh, resonate with what Guru was expressing. As he told, Yudai Tam Nimishena Chakshu Shaka, the wind started coming, to, then he said, and then tears, they're coming like the torrents in the rainy season. The, it started raining, and we were all like, Seeing the environment of Navadip expressing what was coming from Guru Maharaj's heart. And then Sarva Baba, I, I actually looked off the side of the veranda uh, for a bearing to try and figure out where we were. And Sarva Baba, he said it best to Guru Maharaj. And everyone knew something divine happened and said, Maharaj, <laughs> you took us somewhere. And uh, he changed it into something a little similar, but it was a fact. We, somehow we were taken to another plane by his grace. Why am I saying this? Because, oh, so that guru came, and then he heard Guru Maharaj speak. And he was like overwhelmed, and then the Guru Dev took us downstairs for some prasada. So, you know, and always like, Begum Baja. Because sometimes, and I, being such a baby, Guru they would take extra care of me. And I remember one time I came back to the mud, all these devotees were like so happy to see me. We've been living at the mud like three months while I was gone. But they were like really like a little too happy to see me. And I was like, well, we're so happy you're back. And I was trying to figure this out. And then they said, because now there's going to be me, Bayron, and like... <laughs> right, that's what they... Yeah, they were saying like, man, are we all... I love you, man. <laughs> and I think, all this affection, I've been gone. And they hardly know each other. But then, so that's what they say, Gurudev, he gets out the mean, but he's got a way that he captures everyone with the prasadam particularly Janardhan Maharaj when he came we were talking about this today and they didn't want any disturbance because he's such a famous person and a big guru in this time and he said he said the guru they like if we, we just I was on my hands and knees begging them just please please and go no they will come and the GDC will I said no they won't they won't I mean I was just lying through my teeth but the thing that it, what I was saying would be true, but I wasn't sure. But then you know, he agreed that if you hear the mantra, he gives you me, you got it going. And then, so yeah. And so finally, they, they agree, and they give him bhakti, pavam, janardam, and Guru Maharaj says the sannyas mantra. And, and uh, uh, he's, Janardhan Maharaj said, he's talking to Guru Dev and said about like, you know, I can leave today. And he said, Guru Dev said, oh, that is not necessary. You can go tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so that, uh, and oh, we took here, and this was like, up to here maybe. Yeah, this was the room. This here is room, and this was the veranda. And there was even a, a partition in the veranda that I went to. Right. It was opened big like this later by a charger Myers, a service to do it. It's a little tiny little room. And we're, I'm kind of like, generally, you know, we're taking facade on this real world in the mirror. It's just like, you know, he's entering a new world. And, and there's this one preparation thing. And uh, Gurudev asks, you know, 
how do you like that? Like, maybe some will know what it is, but is that what I'm trying to find a broken? Here it is, you think it is. That was the favorite preparation of Harai Pandit, Nityananda Prabhu's father. I love it! <laughs> <laughs> So <laughs> 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 anyway, we're downstairs and eating the mean bagel and uh, bagel baja and everything. And, uh, and Gurudev comes to us and he's just telling people, giving some orders and they're giving him something and he's going him up. And, and then he says to us, Guru Maharaj wants to see you again. And that's very unusual. Because usually after Guru Maharaj finishes his talk, go down to Prasad. That's it. Until 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So Guru Maharaj wants to see you again. So the three of us, we go back upstairs and we see you. And this, you can understand, is take on yourself, but not. This is classic Guru Maharaj, do it for everything. Guru Maharaj says, I am thinking that your earnestness to preach about Mahaprabhu is so great and so sincere that Mahaprabhu himself personally supplied this prasad. So I told Govinda Maharaj, you bring some for me to take. So that's Guru Maharaj took that. And then that's when the one who said, I couldn't think of what to say in Mahaprabhu. Thank you. Thank you. And Guru Maharaj said, thank you. So that doesn't sit well with me. And we're all like, what should I say? And Guru Maharaj said, express some appreciation. He said, but thank you. He said, that presupposes two parties who are different. And that one party came and they got something from the other party and they're saying, thank you. He said, but actually, and then Guru Maharaj said this very affectionately. He opened his eyes and he, and he turned his head and he said, But we are all Mahaprabhu's men. Like that. And I thought, Guru is so infinitely superior and exalted. He says, we, when he says we, we're all included. And Guru Maharaj is we. But there were others who weren't willing to include him in their we. And he says, he, he, when he says we, he's including us. Guru Maharaj is the, the, we know, your disciple, the on reverential position. But Guru Maharaj and Guru Dev, I saw after a certain amount of time, they're friends. They've transcended the master servant. It's there, it's suppressed, it's real. But now they're friends, they're best friends. So Guru Maharaj would make you feel we're friends, even though he's so superior in height. And he'd say, together, let us pursue this. And seeing here, the disciples of Sula, Bhakti Sula Dhamana Maharaj, I have to say, because Sula Dhamana Maharaj was so, such a, Prabhupada would say, a Vaishnava was a perfect Dhamana. When I think of that, I think of Sula Dhamana Maharaj. That just like fit perfectly. But he would come here and say, so what is this I hear about subjective evolution? And then Guru Maharaj would start. You know, <laughs> and he was just like, so. if anyone could, would be soaking this up, he would be. But, he, and I was telling this before, because we're talking about names and things, like Professor Senyal, his name was uh, Nishikanta Senyal, his legal name. His spiritual name was Narayan Das Adhikari. And he had a title, Bhakti Subhakari. But they call him Professor Senyal. But there was a feather in the cap of Bodhi Amat that we had a great professor. So the Sri Dhamma is probably a scientist. But so Sri Dhamma he did he play that role perfectly? But he also wanted the devotees to know, like, you know, he would sing Gita Gobinda sometimes a little bit on play harmonium and different things. He's from Manipur, they have a different culture there. And so his devotional side, but so he's telling Guru in a very, uh, you know, like happy and sharing it. He said, I'm building a temple, constructing a temple in money pool. And Guru Maharaj said, oh, that's very nice. But you are not meant for that type of construction. 
Right. <laughs> he said, many can do it. He said, but Swami Maharaj wants you to construct a temple over the tomb of Darwin. <laughs> and everybody like <laughs> started dancing. It was so sweet. That you should construct. <laughs> that only you can do. This other type of construction, many can do. But only you can construct a temple over the tomb of Darwin. So anyway, that man said, thank you. He said, it doesn't sit well, like, we're all Mahaprabhu's now. And then we all live happily ever after. <laughs> Until today. Hare. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, two meetings. Oh, so then I told him that, uh, see, when I had this first real important meeting with him, heavy meeting, I was told, in what the, like you already said, one word, the first sentence where I answered everything. What was perplexing the minds of the finest minds, you could say, of the Krishna consciousness movement, in one sentence, he answered, everything became adjusted. His famous three types of guru we may conceive. One foot, you know, two feet there, extending one foot here, taking from here to there. One foot there, uh, like, you know, one foot here, a new connection there, taking from here to there. And he said, and a third class, two feet in the mud. And with their eyes fixed on Vaikuntha and saying, let us go there. So everything became adjusted, but anyway, it went on and on and on, and like more and more and more. And so I was totally adjusted and happy after the one meeting. The big one. Anticipating the minds of others, and then my own mind will say like, that was too wonderful. It was too perfect. The mind will start playing, did it really happen? Right, too good to be true. It, like, some doubt on some level would come. Then, second meeting, reinforced that no, it was all true, it was all real. <clears throat> that kind of thing. So. And as I told, I told sometimes, I'll just say now, but this time, Yani Shama Prabhu Thalamam, called my personal brother to say anything. When Bhakti Abhay Narayan Maharaj and I, from, he's from Hungary, we got up this one morning in Mayapur, it was time for Mangal Arati. But we both knew we weren't going. We decided the evening before we're going to sneak out and go to the Chaitanya Saraswati Mahat and find Krishna's body in there. We didn't dream we could speak to Guru Maharaj. But like people, we didn't know. People I ended up like, but we thought Babaji Maharaj we'd met before sometimes during the Hari Nam. So uh, we we go and you know we sneak out and you know, it's like we get on the boat and we're at the mat we go into what used to be Hari Chorum's room and there's Babaji Maharaj. How he turned the like about the books and everything. And I said, Oh, Babaji Maharaj, all the great disciples of Saraswati Thakur are leaving the world day by day, and we're afraid the real kirtan will be lost. So if you but I feel if I will record you, <coughs> then we'll preserve this for the posterity and like that. And I kind of pull the tape recorder out of my bag. Because I, he's very unpredictable how he'll react. He saw the tape before and he said, the important thing is that you can't pay Krishna. <laughs> and I put the tape before he went and we put our hands and we said, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. And like one round, two rounds. After round four or six rounds, he started to lighten up a little bit. Hey, hey. 
Then he's like conducting. <laughs> <laughs> You know, we're chanting, and now he's, now he's in a good mood. And then he wanted to be merciful to us. So he like jumped, he is very sprightly, he jumped off the bed. And he goes, come, come! And Narayan went, and so, like this. He's moving very fast, we're going very fast, and we go through where Ranyan used to sit and keep it home. Then we go up, like they spiral up to something like that. And then I went, I thought, oh, this is unbelievable. And there's Guru Maharaj in his lawn chair, and like what we said they do. Now he's facing the deities and wrapped and all these scars. And it's like February, it's cold. And we both just like did Shastanga Dandavats from the gate. And almost like started crawling towards him. That the most inconceivable thing is happening. And then we approached Guru Maharaj, and then Babaji Maharaj was, and he perched himself behind Guru Maharaj like this, Guru Maharaj. And the whole time he's going, He's chanting the whole name. And then he perches himself behind Guru Maharaj and he goes, Listen! <laughs> Listen! You understand? He doesn't eat. He knows the the premier preacher of Krishna consciousness of all time is upstairs. He's going to give us some mercy. Okay. Okay. <coughs> and we follow him to the lotus feet of Guru Maharaj, and then Guru Maharaj starts coming and he spoke about subjective others, absolute consideration, relative, a wonderful talk. But at one point though, he, saying about Babaji Maharaj and us knowing each other. <laughs> this is Guru Maharaj's sense of humor and use of understatement. And he's going, you are members of the Hare Krishna movement. And he said, this gentleman, I was chanting like 24 hours a day, but this gentleman, he has some affinity for Krishna. So it is natural that no be friendly. Is that the first time that you met you? That's the first time. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then, and for the rest of the devotees too, then you realize, what is your preaching field? And I said, oh, I preach in Eastern Europe and the communist countries. But just recently, I've gone to Russia. We're going to preach in now. And this, what Guru Maharaj said is amazing. He said, there was a cloud of atheism hanging over the country, over the Soviet Union, like blocking the, like the Bhagavad sun, like this cloud of atheism. He said, but Srila Swami Maharaj, when he went there, just that once he went there, we call it the Mahabhagata purifies 8,000 8, yojanas, like over 100,000 kilometers. So he said, just by his going there, Guru Maharaj said, the cloud of atheism lifted. He said, now you can go there and preach successfully. So even Guru Maharaj gave his blessings for preaching Krishna consciousness in the Russia and the former Soviet Union countries. And on that note, Bhakti, Bhimal, Abhudut Maharaj, Please come here and say something. Unless you want to do it from there. Just in the middle time of the city yeah. here, it's, it is very nice to see that this veranda is kept very much as when Guru Dev was here. Guru Dev would sit here in this yeah. regular sitting place. And here on this pillar, he has Sri Chaitanya Sarasat Mass when it's attached. On this pillar here, there's a thatched uh, house, as it were. And on the right, he's got the Russian. Uh, is that Saint Petersburg? That's yeah, Saint Petersburg. Saint Petersburg. Yeah. No, right. So on, he's seeing two di two pillars, and he must also be thinking Chaitanya Sarasat Mahat, how it started from being a thatched house. And now a worldwide mission where in Russia, which was such an 
a country which is going to not think that any sort of freedom of religion, etc., will come. So many devotees there, and they were so pleased to have these here. That's it here. Anyway, and in general, the veranda is kept just as it was when Srila Gurudev was present here and staying here, so we can share some of his prasada and what he surrounded himself with. And he liked very much more of his picture of Sarasati Kapu. Which one? Oh, that one. Yeah, the one on the right. Yes, where he's showing. The one where he shows the superiority. I mean, what he's showing in the picture is uh, the Guru Vanuga was, was commissioned for that photo. And having very expensive driving. It's a big, well done for a big thing. More than 100 people. Oh, Madhyana Timuranda said, you might have in my prayers to that for five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do slow. I'll do my slow game. I will now recite the Vishnu Sanskrit. Yes. No, 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 no. Right now. Okay, I'll... And then... I'll get out of it. After two hours changing, I'll get out of the computer and... <laughs> continue your dynamic <laughs> You can say, as a Sachana to spawn eyes, you will win. True story <coughs> means a flower. A flower actually means in our logo disciple. As a Sachana to spawn eyes, you will win. What it really means is a guru to his divine media take disciples a flower and offer it to Krishna. And such a wonderful flower was waiting in our mud, in the garden of Shura, Guru Maharaj and Shura Shidana as, as Mati Sudhi Maharaj. Mm -hmm. And this is not... Uh, uh, no, no. Today's Guru Kameen. Uh, this is not Guru Kameen. Excuse me, interrupting. I raise objection. So... And there are different the flower to be offered at the lotus feet of Goranga Mahaprabhu. Yeah. 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 So Maharaj has been in China, and one of his disciples, Malina Devi Daisi, which is a tea master. So one time, because we are tea connoisseurs and tea lovers, she brought us some tea. And I said, why this tea is so special? And she said, well, this is actually a long, but it's a rock tea. I said, what is it, rock tea? She said, because this tea has been growing on a mountain rock. And if you can survive in a rock, as a tree, as a tree, not in the soil, on a rock, in a hardcore rock, the potency of this environment will be in the leaf of the tree. That's why this is so expensive, this is so wonderful, it's worth it. So, if flower has been artificially raped very quick, it has Raping. some, yes, raping. it has some volume. But only to those who have no <coughs> deep, substantial understanding. But if this flower, just like Parijata flower, been growing in a particular environment and growing very slow, then it produces the most unique fragrance you can have. So in all these years, we have seen a great, we actually witnessed the great growth of. Maharaj, and actually he will object, but I can say this, it is not for his own satisfaction, and that's what my argument was in favor of this analysis. It is not for only your own spiritual development, it is actually to be able to share things which you are conceived and received from 
और गुरु बाढ़ गुरु बंश बच्चे सचिदा दे दूसरा मास श्री गुरु मास दूसरा मास नो आदर्स बट यू हैव यूनिक यूनिक एसोसिएशन यूनिक अपीलिंग टू सर्व सो मेनी डिफरेंट पार्टनर्स एंड एवरीबॉडी वर्क यू इन सेटिस्फाइड विद यू सो एंड गुरु देव when i mantra and glory we know that he's got mercy of all the god brothers of burma and saraswati temple and what we can say is that narasimha maharaj really has all the blessings and all good will taking him up of all family of chitanya saraswati maharaj and also people outside of chitanya saraswati maharaj such as radha swami any actually substantial person who visits chitanya saraswati maharaj must not almost come through his hands be attended and be amazed by the quality of his service attitude his dedication determination and that's why we are gloriously dancing today actually <coughs> not only that is <laughs> i cannot believe that i'm the only person in russia to represent so the democracy I do not believe that because I know how good it is exists in everybody's heart. Those who's in position with me, even those who's opposition with me, it touch everybody's heart. Those who are my friends, those who are my enemies, those who are like me, those who doesn't like me, because all of them got mercy of God. So I know that people like. Krishna Kantra, Malindra, and Italy, and all their servitor group, and guys in Hungary, and Brazil, all of them have some good, they have mercy, special mercy. Every devotee who will be here and stay a particular time with good and serve, he's got something very substantial. So, so that's why I believe that it's, this treasure is so good, it can be represented by one man. or two men or a hundred thousand men. But the important part is everyone here has something divine, but who can conduct the service? See Sri Bulamar's idea was who can conduct service of Sushi Tanya Saraswati. That's why he thought about the Charimaj. But to us personally, he said a very important thing. <coughs> Cooperate with those who cooperate and take care of Western devotees under association guidance of Mahananda Guru. That's how many of them are now. And as we can see, time going by, time passing, and actually these instructions are more and more refined for us because we can understand there's nothing we can do with external circumstances. We can't establish devotion by court case. You can't establish devotion by argument. You can't establish devotion by, you know, political party, left, right. You can only bhaktiam such as that. Devotion is to be established only by devotion. So at some point, we were very much lamented that our mission, which has a very high name, went down. Because people heard we have so many problems, we have this, that. So it was very. Painful for us to hear that such a great mission, which is Guru Maharaj, you know, this area is being actually a residence of opposition. In time, they got converted, <coughs> but it was very painful. But what is very happy today that we believe that by Madhusudan Maharaj taking charge of preaching, Sanyas means preaching. Sanyas. Does not mean actually his own spiritual life. His spiritual life now is to to make spiritual life for others, as he's always been doing. But now it is coming to the extreme level. It's just like a marathon, you know. You start running, and when you start marathon, maybe uh, you know when they show this great sport event, maybe a uh, hundred thousand people will be running, and then you see after. Um, They are running all together at about the first five minutes, and then they start formation. The leader and few guys running behind, the leader and few other guys running behind, and at about a marathon is 40 kilometers. At about 20 kilometers, things become clear, very clear. <laughs> That means like half of them like uh, all train, but half of them like going away because they just can't. It's a very you know intense program. 
And those who are think I'm, you know, the best runner in my village, actually they find themselves in the very end. And then you can understand, well, I'd rather run behind this person back because he's kind of like pulling me. So at the sport event, you understand marathon, in the beginning everybody runs. On the end, it's like little groups. And actually, at the very end, the whole thing starts. It does not really start from the beginning, because in the beginning everybody has some potency to run sometimes. But it starts on the end, when you have no power, no enthusiasm, you think you can't really make it, because you know you can't make it. At that very point, the divine, it's called second breath, or third breath, whatever. Second wind. Yeah, second wind. Different type of... But that's what we expect. So, Madhusudan Maharaj now achieved that second win. As he's been running, you know, very successfully <laughs> for many years, proved that, you know, we can ride behind his back. And no, I'm not sure about any of this. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure. I don't he can do it. But now we can understand. So, second win is me actually to dedicate completely and deliver it. Because Prabhupada, if you look at Prabhupada's life, he's been all his life a great servitor of his guru and Vaishnavas. And more than 10 years he spent for translating books and preparing himself. But really, his last 10 years of his life, that's where the miracle is happening. That's where he delivered Krishna consciousness to everybody else. Only 10 years. And if you consider that in 10 years, how many temples and centers? So Guru Prabhu, and Prabhu uh, knows better than that, Guru Prabhu told me interesting things. The devotees in the ISKCON, they would go collect from temple to temple. <coughs> if Prabhupada would be in one temple, then some of the devotees would go there and find out what did he eat, what did he like about this. Because they could not really like substantially be with him all the time. So the devotees would be in constant exchange. So some devotees would you know, kind of like a hunting what the Prabhupada would do in this temple, what he will, what is the favorite preparation, what did he say that? Am I correct? Maybe Prabhupada disciples they will say that it's true. So, but you can understand, in 10 years, in a very short time, practically with very um, you know, short association with people, but being such intense divine personality, he starred the whole world movement. Like he charged this, you know, it's just like generator. Just, just once it gets started, start get born. But again, as um, Sri Goswami mentioned, his idea was, well, actually, we're going in a very nice way, but what about the thinking Kirtan of Mahaprabhu? Maybe we should preserve that. And that's why we're so grateful to Sri Goswami Maharaj, because his idea was not about external progress. His idea was to get to get it right. You know, if we could be great in numbers like Muslims, that's great. That's a wonderful thing. We can play all together and feel unity. But as quantity increase, the quality decrease. So quality of service that's what we actually can detect in Madhusudan Maharaj's personal life, and that's what we expect from him. Uh -huh. Maybe you see the Guru, they captured me and left me and engaged. So now I'm going last, I'm finishing. <laughs> I'm finishing. No, that's, no, that's what's happening. Sure. Oh. If you can. Well, I just want to finish with one sentence. Yeah. So, the important part, the sannyas is an initiation. It's a wonderful thing, but it's not the end of your life. It's a good news. Myself, okay? Myself. So it's not the end of your life, it's the beginning of life. And great life. So you're legally dead and spiritually alive. Right.
we have so many guardians visible to us and Guru Maharaj used to say we have so many invisible guardians also and when we are in chanting the Jaya prayers then we are always feeling somehow Bhakti Vinay Thakur is very much present and an invisible guardian especially to the Western world he is the one who saw these days coming and Guru Dev said yes when I joined and I am with Guru Maharaj I heard these prophecies of Bhakti Vinod Thakur but I could never think that that would happen in my life it was such a remote idea and then when all the devotees from every country or every corner of the world were coming then Guru Dev said on several occasions that I have seen this in my lifetime is one kind of miracle I am amazed I have seen this so it's the bound by affection of Shiva Bhakti Rapa Chida Deva Sama bound by affection of Shiva Bhakti Sama Deva Sama Deva Sama Deva Sama Deva Sama that is what has kept me here that is what has kept you all here but I think we also have our senior devotees like Krishna Kanti to be should we say something in other places we just forgot to say that who they say do not have any flower blossom under any circumstances <laughs> 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 he was you talking are. about the flower the tea flower I think he wanted I to say I stole this problem from Guru Dev mm -hmm. and you are brought even deeper appreciation mm -hmm. you should say something <laughs> and by the way, there are many non-sannyasi, very capable creatures, and not only amongst the men, but amongst the ladies, who have had got so much grace and affection from Guru Dev. Even Guru Dev has given some of his lady devotees more of a certificate than us men. So please do listen to Krishna. Please do listen to Krishna. Thank you for what she says. I heard from Guru Dev that he wanted to give you sannyas, and you always escape somehow. I couldn't escape his team, though, could I? They ganged up on me. I think it's it's like he told like to me that he wanted as a center in Rome. And we couldn't do it when he was alive, but we are trying to do some preaching now that and I feel like we are trying to serve him in separation and he's even giving maybe more, much more joy than like, that. So you also today you got sannyas that it was his desire to be to you. So you take him in separation from him and I think he will be even more exalted your preaching. And I hope you will come to Italy too. To inaugurate. He's coming here. Yeah, we have a good life. I have taken her. I have taken her special fast. No, no, before I came to the temple, I think I have eaten four times in my life. Only after you come to the you have pizza. And you know what? Shul Guru Dev loved that. Yes. He's not like that. He loved that. And he's a hunter with her heart. And I mean, you know, everything about you, the Buddha is completely artistic. I felt like I'm on some divine thing. Everything artistic. The way they dress, the way the altar, the prasada. The service. That's why I understand. Good that he had the taste, appreciates the beauty of devotees. Not the external beauty. I'm not talking about external beauty. It's there, but some proper mood is there. Mm -hmm. And one thing also, who Guru they appreciated and gave blessing to. We saw. I mean, for years, many years, by their days, we saw how Guru they interact with devotees. So when we will give special attention, special mercy to someone, we will remember that one. And that one example is here. That means that 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 he is the most fallen. That was his. Well, that's my case. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. I noticed that. I am most need. Off, off, the, off the chart of the poem. One day we would have, when Krishna found the house was in trouble, we were sitting. And Gurdjieff speaking about these people, 
the time to name the book. And, you know, she has some serious health problems. And some people say, oh, you know, health, you can go anytime. But Buddha said, servitor like this, Krishna will not allow to die. I am telling you. And Buddha said, because Krishna had chemotherapy to save the head. She went to a very difficult stage of life. But at that very stage, her idea was not to like go in the house, go in and become. She just told me like, <coughs> she felt totally like, okay, maybe I have a very short time for you, but I try to satisfy my guru as I have very few days remaining to see. The guru has a different plan for me. He said, if you are in this life, Krishna see dedication, he will not let you go actually down. So after many years, when we came to Italy, I have seen you know, many people coming, but they, you know, they don't actually realize everything comes from sacrifice. Look at this mud. Every building, every little portion of it, it comes from sacrifice, hard work, hard donations of devotees. Nothing came like, it wasn't like radio on the plate. Every inch of, you know, Chaitanya Saraswat Mahal is a cardboard collection of Guru Shakti. She collected half of her life. She got humiliated. She had to like go into, you know, the mood where you were like, just give me money and you can call anything you want. Just give me <coughs> money. And that money would come to Guru Dev Lotus hands and he would transfer that money from karma into doctrine. Just imagine. How many people got benefited? It's called Agyata Sukuti. They have no idea they're giving donations to like Navadin Seva or Vrindavan Seva. They have no idea. Actually, if they would have an idea, they wouldn't give it. Because they have no value. If you ask them, oh, give me some money for cats and dogs, and they're okay, for cats and dogs. <laughs> what about Krishna? Oh, Krishna is like, I'm not sure if I want <laughs> So. The Shakti should say something. Don't cry. <laughs> <laughs> you know you can. Anyway, I offer my basis to say something. Who's like another, a pillar? Like me. A strong, <laughs> very strong pillar here in Sri Navadu. We know about the book Bhagavad. Huh? And so we have so many beautiful books in our mission. So many beautiful books. and. Uh, Madhusudan Maharaj has translated so many of our books into English to give inspiration to so, well, not translated, but transliterated, okay, so good word, but um, spoke the um, spoken books, and he has, he has spoken so many books to give so much inspiration to so many of us all over the world, and Whenever you are, you know, whenever, like if I'm out, or collection, or driving here and there, or doing anything, anyone can get inspiration from reading, by hearing, listening to any of the books that have been uh, compiled through the mercy of the Swami Maharaj or any of our other uh, leading devotees in our mission. And it's just such a valuable service because I really take a lot of shelter in that, and I'm so grateful for um, this service that you have done. It and it's it's incredible because like it's just amazing when you think about all these books. I haven't even read all the books. I can't even listen to all of them. But he has done this service, and it's just so beautiful and so <laughs> glorious. And I'm just very grateful for that. And he's such a pillar here. He's here when there's been no one here. He has been here through thick and thin. Um, he's given so much inspiration. <laughs> he's given so much inspiration to all of us here in Sri Navadita. Always enlivened to be here under his guidance. He gave me so much guidance with all whatever little service that I could do here in Sri Navadita. And I'm so grateful for your friendship, your association. And um, all your inspiration that you've given to me personally, and <laughs> <laughs> and to all the devotees all over the world, we all love you so much.
And this is the holiest of holy days, the parents of Petita Pava. Very I still, I still have his boots. I have motorcycle, <laughs> motorcycle boots, but I recently got rid of my motorcycle license. I told them. <laughs> <laughs> well, he didn't give me a gun, but he gave me the motorcycle too. He didn't give me, but gave me the use of the motorcycle. And sometimes I think it was for his satisfaction actually. The first time that we came to, uh, from here down to Dum Dum Park on the motorcycle, was with Harry Mohan from Australia. And we went down there and the motorcycle was not working very well. We went down to get it fixed up there. When we arrived in Dum Dum Park, Gurudev came downstairs to greet Harry Mohan and me. <laughs> and we were black from all the... We run, didn't have any proper clothes. We were completely black from the trucks. And, and Gurudev was so happy to see the motorcycle. And asked was all about the journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think it was also a little bit of sort of savor that we're riding a motorbike. Bill Davis pleased and we to hear the adventures of the season. And by his protection, maybe a hundred times I come up and down, never be caught up. Three two times a week, three times every week on that motorcycle. By by Guru Day's protection, then everything went went smoothly. And as far as I know, I still hold the record. One hour, 48 minutes. <laughs> On bad roads. Wow. <laughs> Go to now we'll give you the title, Divine Rider. Uh, I'm coming to get you. Divine uh, Rider. <laughs> and you think you will know that Manadu, by motorcycle, travel all over Malaysia. You see the place? No, no. All the Malaysia. And that was he would come on his boots by motorcycle and ask, and he like, you know, come and start some kirtan preaching, inspire people and just go by motorcycle to another place. And actually, all Malaysian mission was developed by him. No, as I thought everybody around the world was doing this. I didn't think it was anything unusual. <laughs> <laughs> Not everybody did by motorcycle. We did the Lord years with Sudanti Maran in the North Pole, we by motorcycle, you know. And credit to my senior now, who passed away, Dayada Goranda, he was my senior, Guru Maharaj sent me with him to be under him in Malaysia, so all credit to him. We want to hear something also from Mexico. <coughs> But not about me, no. I can't chastise you because you don't know English. <laughs> I am indebted to everybody. The sannyasis really, they forcefully broke me and explained so many ways. But it's not only the sannyasis. So many people have given their, their uh, input and preparation and their support. So I just pray that that will continue. But please, today is not about me now. <laughs> it, is, 
It is now time to talk about Mahaprabhu and how wonderful his appearance and how these festivals have taken place here in Nadavi for the satisfaction of Guru Dev and Guru Mahaprabhu. But sometimes in Spanish speaking Guru, we talk to Shri Guru and Shri Guru that we see here, and Spanish is always they would express their heart in Spanish. And Guru Dev would just like smile yeah. and look at them. <laughs> and they speak with him in Spanish and they and actually, they have no any doubt we totally understand them. Right. And Guru is speaking to them in English, and yes. they are also fully. <laughs> yeah. And Guru has told hire yeah. to hire transactions. <laughs> he said it's not about which language you're speaking; it's about mood, and, and that's a wonderful service. And I remember when <coughs> I was fortunate to visit Mexico many years ago. I had the dreadlocks and came by car with my brother. <laughs> And there it was, the temple was opening. I remember all those days. I remember how much Mexican devotees with Ashram and all the devotees, they were affectionate to Shri Guru. How much they love him, how much they actually are. It's an amazing how. And I remember when Guru Dev got the key of there it was. Yes, yes, by your grace. This the key is here. The key to the city of there it was. I was an eyewitness. And Guru Dev came, the and there was like Mayor City and all the big people. And Guru Dev came to the municipal building, which is very old, beautiful building, with so many uh, devotees, and they gave him the key. But he also had to give them something. something like, like normally, somebody would receive the teacher, they would be happy, like, okay, okay. But Guru Dev felt, okay, you give me the key of your city, I also have to give you something. And he started. <laughs> it was so mystical that all were amazed because he started Kirta. But he also knew that this is municipal people like Mayor of the city here and like all the world is like start going like hurry. <laughs> so he controlled, he's like, stop. <laughs> I didn't tell you you have to do the full, you know, Rasa Kirtan, just a little bit. Because the way we're going out of you know, they're going a little bit like start, like we do it here, you know. Hurry bull, hurry bull. <laughs> so he did like very mild, kirtan, bless everybody, and that was so sweet, and it touched their hearts. So they're like, we lift up the key and he gave them something very, very valuable. Yes. And another thing we see the word.